Tonight, a man sits in a Rhode Island jail waiting sentencing for heinous crimes he got away with for years. They happened in Haiti, and his victims were among the country's most vulnerable, orphans living on the streets. The man sitting in jail tonight targeted these children while living a double life in plain sight. Now, I need to warn you, the abuse you're about to hear described is graphic and it's disturbing. Here's Vladimir Dutier. When Doug Perlitz arrived in Cap Haitian in the 1990s to work with homeless street kids, he seemed like a savior. Perlitz built a school where boys could be safe. It became known as the village, a place where boys who had nothing could come to learn, eat, sleep, and play. Francilli and John Charles came to the village when he was 12 years old. When I met Mr. Douglas, he appeared to us like Jesus Christ himself come to rescue us. Brian Russell was an early donor to Perlitz's project. We opened the gates up to the village and it was like this paradise. There was no garbage in the village. There were buildings that, that were not in complete disrepair. And it seemed like an oasis in the middle of, you know, a desert. Perlitz raised a lot of money and was beloved by the local community. What no one knew, however, was that behind the smiles and the good deeds, Doug Perlitz was actually a monster. According to more than a dozen boys, Perlitz routinely molested them for years. Douglas had an outward appearance that would make it hard to believe he was doing these things, because whenever people would see him, he would always be praying and rescuing children. Wilnick Mesidor was just 11 when he says Perlitz began to abuse him. Fredlin Legrand was 14. He gave me a pill that made me fall asleep, and when I woke up, I found my pants covered in sperm. I started to cry because I never thought something like this would ever happen to me. <laughs> one night he would take Francillian, one night he would take me, one night it could be anyone else. He always had a watch and he used the watch light to look for little kids to have sex with them. The boys say they didn't know what to do. They didn't want to return to the streets, so they stayed silent for years. But in 2007, unable to stand it any longer, a few boys approached teachers and adults in town and told them what Perlitz did. But either no one believed them or they were afraid to cross Doug Perlitz. The school became a business boon for the town and to live well in this town you needed to go through Mr. Douglas. Some boys, in desperation, began to scrawl messages on the school walls, hoping to get someone's attention. All along these walls, there's graffiti markings that have been painted over. The boys say that the only way that they were ever able to get anybody to understand what was going on behind these walls was to write the graffiti about what Doug Perlitz was doing to them. And actually here you see two words that are left here, uh, a plea for help, welcome National Police of Haiti. The police, however, never came. Finally, a local radio reporter named Cyrus Cibert saw the graffiti and told the kids he'd help. I told the boys, I will go to the end with you. Are you ready? And they said, no problem. Cibert interviewed one of the kids on his radio show. But at first, Haitian authorities and American donors refused to believe them. There was no way that this man could have committed these things that people were accusing him of. It, 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 it seemed utterly out of, out of the realm of possibility. There was too much goodness. The heart was too big. It wasn't until the spring of 2008 that an American volunteer discovered something was terribly wrong. Brian Russell got a call from the volunteer at the school. She related a story to me where one of our older boys had raped one of our younger boys. Our volunteer went to the Haitian headmaster of the school and said, we have to do something more about this. We can't have children raping each other. And his response was, well, that's really hard because Douglas has been doing this for the last 10 years. Confronted by his donors, Perlitz fled Haiti and returned to the U.S., where a year later, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents arrested him and charged him with allegedly abusing 18 underage boys. On his computer, they found links to pornographic websites, which according to court documents said Perlitz, quote, showed one or more minors homosexual pornography or displayed homosexual pornography on his laptop computer to entice and persuade the minors to comply with the sex acts. Perlitz initially refused to cooperate with police, but this past August, he struck a plea deal admitting only that he had sex with eight minors and confessing that he traveled from the U.S. to Haiti to have sex, which is just one of the 24 counts he originally faced. In a handwritten confession, he wrote, one of the dominant purposes of that trip was to engage in illicit sexual conduct with one of the minor boys. Perlitz faces up to 20 years in prison and will be sentenced on Tuesday. Those who once supported Perlitz are still trying to understand how all of this could have happened. You feel like you want to go hug those kids and you want to save those kids. 
and you can't. Many of the kids are now young adults and view Perlitz's limited confession as some measure of justice. For us, this is a victory. A victory because in the beginning, Doug denied it. He said I was a liar, that the boys were liars. I felt proud because everybody used to say that I was lying, but I knew I was telling the truth. For these young men, the truth has come with a heavy price. The school is closed, the staff laid off, and they're back on the streets. The same streets where Doug Perlitz found them so many years ago. Vladimir Dutier, CNN, Cap Haitian, Haiti.